already won. We just have to walk in that victory. Walking
but everybody's separate. We want to, and I want to say thank you to our volunteers, man. You guys keep these doors open week in and week out. Thank you. We get to thank you. I see we got the separation of chairs. Gosh, this is not. Uh, this is kind of a foolish thing. Well, let me just say it like this: COVID is real. Yes. Yes. And I'm gonna be stupid. No. There. Well, let me say it like this before we get started. Oh yeah, I am so glad that you're here today. We don't care if you're red, yellow, you're black, or you're white. Don't care how bad you think you are. Don't care if you're tatted to the max. Don't care if you're pierced up so bad that you can't even go through the airport. Can I get a witness? Yes. Don't yes. care today how bad you think you are. You look at the church, you missed it. Because we're not in it. <laughs> Definitely. All we are are a bunch of people that have been broken, right. but God has put back together again. So yeah. me and my friends, come on, let's go give the Lord praise today, man. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, tell you what, before you sit down, turn around and wave at people, okay? Just turn around and say hello, and then you can be seated. Awesome job, guys. Awesome job. Some of you cannot fast for a meal. I understand that. Ask God. Maybe he's going to help you. Maybe he'll speak to you and say, fast. Fast your phone, cell phone for three days. Did I hear a groan? <laughs> ah! We have a class for that. <laughs> I don't know. You ask the Lord what he wants you to do. And if it's a meal, if it's, hey, maybe laying off caffeine for three days, just to remind yourself that you're praying for the house, praying for our community, and praying for men and women in our, uh, in our, our area. So do that. We'll open the church up at 7 o'clock on Monday and Tuesday. And Wednesday night, we're going to have, we're going to kick it off, finish it off with a night of praise and worship by our praise team. It is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Each night, 7 o'clock, you come, you can pray as long as you like. And leave when you want to. And then again, we're going to be praying Monday, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And then Wednesday, night of worship. Also, don't forget, next Sunday morning, we're going to have baptism. Water baptism. And somebody says, water baptism. Yes, sir. We're going to be baptizing first and second. If you'd like to be baptized, go back there and sign up, please. And we appreciate that so very much. And uh, we'd love to have you. If you profession of your faith, 
This is a symbol of what God has done on the inside. It's an expression on the outside. It's an inward witness of an outward testimony of what God has done. So somebody said, well, Pastor, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. And some of you, I will go over. <laughs> Just to make sure, you know. <laughs> But please, man, if you'd like to be baptized, sign up back here in the back. Please just wear you know, casual clothes, you know, you want to change, whatever, uh, after that, and, or before, that's fine. But we'll be doing the first service and second service. So please join us. It's going to be a fun time of celebration and honoring the Lord Jesus Christ and baptism, and it's going to be great. So keep that in mind. And if you would, please, over my shoulders, a couple of quick announcements. What's up, Destiny family? This is your student pastor, Lamar Duff, coming at you. And we want to get back to safely serving our teens on Wednesday nights. But we need your help. We're looking for those who would be willing to sponsor meals and serve to our teens once a month. And I will also be working on a rotations list where if you'd like to sponsor a meal or serve our teens once a month or more, we encourage you to sign up today in our lobby. We totally need y'all's help of feeding these hungry teens. Bro, we are so hungry. For real. We need some food. No cat. Like, seriously. <laughs> you gotta feed the hungry. Feed the hungry. Like food. Okay? Please. So if you wanna sign up, come out, sign up in the information desk out in the lobby. We appreciate it. Love you guys. Hello, Destiny. I'm Meredith Mangano, the new children's minister. It has been right about a year since there have been classes or activities for kids here at Destiny because of safety precautions. Well, we are ready to jump back in as safely as possible, but we need you. My goal is to open up classes for two and under and three through five year olds on March 21st. That is less than three weeks away, so now is the time to join the mission. If you have a passion for loving and serving children under the age of five, please get in touch with me. There will also be a sign-up sheet in the welcome area on the table near the Lending Library. If you feel God leading you to serve His kingdom in this way, please step up. We will have areas to serve, including leading a class, being a check-in greeter, decorations prep, classroom and lesson prep, and prayer partners. If you have questions or concerns, please come talk to me so we can discuss them. Now, if five and under is not for you, don't worry. We will have more opportunities as we move to open a class for elementary age children. Proverbs 22 verse 6 reads, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The church is a partner to families in training up children to know Christ, and you can be a part of that. We're going towards, I know you today, today's 21st, isn't it? Yes, it is. The reason why, we're again, there's been an outbreak of COVID, and we're trying to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. So we're, we're trying to do a soft opening, and that means that we have to keep everything and everybody clean in the sense of separation and all the, the different things. So we ask you, appreciate your patience. If you can help us, we need you. And uh, we want to make sure that every child is safe, every family that is safe when they come in these doors, that we have done everything that we could to help you and keep you and your family safe. So I told Meredith, just let's just soft open, let's get it going, and we need your help. And if you would, please sign it back in the back too. So we thank you so very much. All right, uh, Narcan, y'all had a training here. That was awesome. I looked and that place was full, man. That was a great time. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, we'll have more down the road because we want to continue to help our community. And this is a very safe way to bring someone down off of an overdose that could actually save their lives. And so we appreciate that. All right, ushers, if you'd join me down here, please. enough for your sacrificing through this time. It's been over a year now. I remember March 29th was my birthday and that was the Sunday that we didn't come in. So I, I remember that. It's coming out pretty fast. 
But I want you to know how much we appreciate you week in, week out. Some of you send over line on the Facebook. Some of you do it through our website. Some of you mail the checks. Some of you bring them like you are right now today. And I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you. You just don't know how much we appreciate you. We pray for you. We ask God's blessings upon you. And thank you so much for everything that you do. Now, Father, we come today and we ask blessings upon each and every one of their businesses. Lord, every one of them that are sitting here today, their hands that God, that you would open doors and windows of heaven to pour out blessings they cannot even contain. I ask you now, Lord, to just anoint each and every one, and I praise you for what you have done and what you're going to do. And we ask you now, Lord, according to thy word, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that they cannot even contain. Lord, I speak life and victory over them, and we thank you, God, for all of us pulling together, whether it's large or small. Father, everyone is making a difference to reach this community, but also reach this world. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Just got hitchified not too many weeks ago. Crystal and Russ. Would you stand? Let's tell them congratulations. They just got married. That was a beautiful day. It's, that's the day it snowed. Holy, we were over in the pipe stand like, it's snowing. Like, holy. Congratulations, guys. We love you and appreciate you. We're so proud of both of you. Amen. All right. Now, if you're in Hebrews chapter 10, stay there for a second. Uh, we want to do something. We want to pray right now a special prayer for Pastor Missy. I know many of you, and again, this is just comes home to us because, I mean, it's one thing knowing people in our community are getting it, but a part of your family gets it. It, it hits that much harder. And that's why I know uh, many have put kind of like, well, you don't have faith, Pastor Steve. You should have faith. You don't have to worry about this mask. It's political. At this point, it's not political to me. It's, it's personal. And I want to make sure it is, it is going in our community. It is causing people to be very, very, very sick. Missy is one of them. And so uh, you can challenge my faith all you want. I don't care. It's something that we don't do as Christians. Sometimes we don't use our noodle. We don't use our noggin. Okay? Just don't use it. So if that offends you, there's probably other churches that have, don't have masks and don't let you go to get your temperatures. And I, I, I love you enough that I'm going to sacrifice anybody's reproach and anybody saying that I don't have faith and I'm not a man of God. And that's okay. That's all right. I can take that. But I cannot take you getting sick because of something we did not do. Sorry. Just can't do it. I can't. I just can't. Okay. Uh, but when Pastor Missy is in Bristol, she has COVID. She, again, uh, she shared with uh, me where they think they've got it. And that's okay. It's, that's whatever. But what we want to do is pray for her. She is in ICU. And uh, her blood pressure, they had her several different medicines. I'm getting this off of Facebook, so I'm not betraying anybody's confidence. So it's on Facebook. It's like they had three medicines. Now it's down to one. They're doing something to rotate her, to flip her, that she's on the vent still, and that they're doing it with her blood pressure and all the different things. Her oxygen is up now to about 90-something, which is a miracle. And so we're, we're just going to stop and pray for Missy. Also, I was aware that one of our young men, that uh, his father, uh, they come, and his father, Jeff Klein, uh, also has COVID. And he is in Richland. And anytime y'all might maybe write some letters or some postcards or cards for these. We'll be glad to get them to them, to them as much as we can. But we, we just want to stop and pray. And pray for Jeff. Pray for Missy. And we'll just ask God to give us wisdom and
pray that we'll just continue to do what you know, do everything we can to make sure you're safe. Can we do that, please? Father, we just pray right now, and I know many of other families have been hit, many other churches have been hit, and I'm not judging them, everybody according to their conviction, but I'm glad that you have given us a house that stood and stands and say, for me and my house, we're going to just do what I, we feel is safe and right to keep our people not judging anybody else, not lack of faith, not anything political, but this is we, just something we feel that we must do. I pray now, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there would just be a miracle healing right now over missing. Psalms 107 verse 20 says that he sent the word and he healed them and delivered them from their disasters. So now, Lord, we pray for missing from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, for those lungs to be restored back so she can breathe, her blood pressure go down at normal places or wherever it needs to be. Lord, anything else in her body, God, bring healing to her. Touch Dwayne, Leslie, Luke. And Landon and their family that are standing on the sideline. I know we're all feeling helpless, but we pray. We can do something. We're doing it now. We intercede for her. We send the word of the Lord over Jeff that God would heal him with COVID and pneumonia. Heal him. Touch his body right now. Lord, we ask you for that family. Touch them and anoint them today. And Lord, we pray also for Chad and Melissa who had lost their father. Lord, we pray for the funeral and the celebration on Wednesday. Be with that family. Let them know that we are, as a church, are behind them and we love them and we're praying for them. And Lord, for any others in our community that are fighting this uh, vicious virus, God, bring healing to their bodies. Bring healing to families that are, are struggling with any other situations. Bring healing to them. And we ask this now in the precious name that's above every name, that name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise today. Amen. Get your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. We'll start there this morning. We're going to look here. I've been speaking to get us going to Easter. Uh, I've been preparing us in preparation that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's power, healing, deliverance, cleansing. There's power. Why? How can you stand up and tell a drug addict that they can be free? Because I know there is still yes. power yes. in the blood yes. of Jesus. Amen. That's how. Because I know he's done a life changing in me, and I know he can do the same thing for you. Yes. I'm going to shift gears here this morning as a word of encouragement because I realize that we are being bombarded from every side. There are three things, three things of the attack of the enemy of our soul. We're going to look at those three things, and then we're going to share with you how to withstand in this day to take the blood of Jesus and to withstand in a culture that totally goes just backwards to everything that the Word of God says. Amen or amen? Amen. Right? amen? Let's look at this. Three things. Number one, there is a war going on in our own nature. That old nature that wants to try to get back and try to, try to move back into your life, as it were, to bring you yes. back into sin. Can I get a grunt out of it? Yes. Now, every one of us are facing that. Now, none of us are immune to it. I don't care who you are. That old nature, Satan continued his tries to stir it up, to pull you back in. Now, the second thing that we're warring against here today around us is our culture. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah, it says there'll be times, and maybe I'm putting that in there, but there'll be times, as I look at that, there'll be times that people will call right, wrong, and wrong, right. Yes. Now, if we're not living in that day and hour, we've got a problem. That's right. Now, give you an example. I know Pastor Steve, Dr. Seuss, he did something 20 years ago. All of us did something 20 years ago that we regret. That's right. Can anybody change? Yes. Goodness sake, how crazy. Listen, let me tell you a secret. Here's the thing. I look up there, and I hear that the culture war is going all around it. You don't believe me? They're banning Dr. Seuss for whatever reason. Green eggs in the ham. And that's probably why, because they ever try to eat gray, green eggs, they bite at you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what books. But let me tell you. Now, they can do that, but they can celebrate two women sitting up there looking. They got more. They, I've seen more cotton and aspirin bottle than what they were wearing. Gyrating almost like a strip club. And they, they applaud that, but they put down a little book that our kids have read for how many right. years. And look at the difference. Well, that's, that's entertainment. Well, guess right. what? I don't think anybody has been injured by reading Green Eggs and Ham. That's right. Come on. That's good. 
now has gone so anti-God. And let me say something to you. I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I am not a racist. I am not homophobic. I am none of those things. I love people. I love red, yellow, black, and white because they're all precious in his sight. I love them because Jesus first loved me. Do not tag me as that because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. I will not let you do that. That's right. Well, you hate people. I do not hate gay or straight. I love people because I love them enough to say, if there's sin in your life, Jesus loves you enough to bring you out of that sin. Great. That's good. I'm not going to sit there and punch somebody's car. What are you? They're human beings. they got a soul. And one day all of us will face God, either good or bad. And I don't want none of you to go to hell. None of you to face that judgment. You don't have to go. But our culture today is screaming anti-God, anti-religion, anti-everything, anti-family. It's screaming everything it can to say, put it down. And it makes it look like we're a bunch of idiots because we're believers in Jesus Christ. Right. Now, there are times that Christians can be jerks. Yes. We get our holy Bibles and we hit them upside the head. Listen, if you don't, if you don't know them, you don't deserve the right to share with them. Listen, let me say that again. So many before you win somebody to Jesus, you have to win them to yourself. Right. See, that's the problem. We want to get up here and preach at them, and we don't deserve the right because we have never asked them the question. We know Jesus is the answer, but we do not understand this. We do not understand and listen to their questions. That's good. Our culture is screaming, just screaming at us. And the church, the problem is the church is going right along with us, the culture. Because we want to put people in our seats and we want to have a nagging church. We're going to water down the gospel so we don't want to offend nobody. They're going to come back next week. Oh, bless the little pea picking hearts. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying there's a time when you stand up and what is right is right. Yeah. Our world needs a change and it starts from the inside. It doesn't start in Washington, D.C. It starts with Jesus right. being alive in us. Our land needs to be healed again. Yes. Church, understand the blood of Jesus covers you today. He is there. And listen, and I'm telling you, because we see these things on the, on the horizon, don't be discouraged in well-doing. And again, I say this in a sweet way, but don't be a jerk. Yeah, but y'all all going to hell. I can't wait to smell the barbecue sauce. What? What? That's not God. That's not God. <coughs> That's not his love. He did more for you to go to heaven than he did to send you to hell. Yes. God does not want to. That, that was not made for man. That was made for Satan. But because they fell, there's where it happens. That's right. You don't have to go today. God loves you. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care if you had to do a line of, of cup to get in here to have strength. I don't care. God loves you. And he's here for a reason. And God wants to show you that he loves you today. Yes. The war against it comes from Satan. The war that comes from Satan. We are being hit from our own nature, from our culture, and now we begin to focus and we understand that Satan's attacking us. Now let me just give you a quick word of exhortation. Six quick things I want to speak to you to encourage your body because I'm telling you, we are in, I believe with all my heart, I believe we are in the last days. Right. And as I read that, it says in Revelation that Satan knows he has but a short time. And I believe because he knows that, he is intensifying the heat. And the church is a time for us to arise and be a voice of yes. hope again in our land. Amen, Romy. Yes. Drug addict to red, yellow, yes. black, and white, gay, or straight. That there is hope through the blood of Jesus Christ. They can be, every one of us can be transformed. Yes. God does not hate you regardless of what you've heard. That's right. Why do you start a service by saying whether you're tatted up? Because I, the people I deal with, most of them have gone to churches and they looked at them and they put them down because they're tatted. Well, you're going to hell because you're tatted. Listen, maybe it's before they got saved. 
Hello, now what? Preach. Rub their skin, skin off, what? What, what? That's good. And I look at them and I say, listen, you've got to understand something. That is not God, God who's saying it. It's his crazy kids sometimes. Listen, come like you are. And if it's sin, he'll show you. He'll show you. He'll yes. open your eyes up. And if you sin, then he can, you can turn and repent in Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, wow. hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at this. This is out of the message. I want this is this scripture right here has spoken to my life over many, 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 many years. Look at what he says. Remember those early days when you first saw the light. The, in the King James, it says after you were illuminated. At first, you got born again. Do you remember some of you ne never really had trials until you got saved? That's right. Yeah. Hello. Let's, let's face it. Not some of you never face trials until you got saved. Why? Because I, I look at it like this. You're going downstream with all the other fish. But I love salmon because you know why? They go upstream. See, that's what, what we're believers. We're going upstream. We're the ones who say, bow down, and you're the one who stands up. It's going to cost you everything. Stand up. Why? Because I know what I was and I know who I am. Yes. It's, not, it's not the same person because of the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. That's right. You see, he says, after you were illuminated or you saw the light, there were hard times. Kicked around in public. Targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you. Some days it was your friends. Some friends went to prison, but you stuck by them. And some of your enemies even broke in and seized your goods and let them go with you. Let them go with a smile on your face. In essence, that's where I get it from. If they can't steal your joy, they can't keep your goods. That's good. Amen. You see, some of you let, let these men and women lick the red off your candy. Mm. They steal your joy. That's why they get over on you, because you let them stay rent-free. That's why you need the blood of Jesus in your brain and say, in the name of Jesus, I know who I am and whom I believe in, and he is able to keep that until, until that day. Can I get a witness out of you? Renew your mind, and I'm not here trying to brainwash myself. I'm standing on what I know the Word of God says. The Word of God says that there will be days like this, but glory to God, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake yeah. you. Can I get a witness out of you? Hallelujah. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Some of your friends went to prison, yes, but you're good. And then you let you smile. Look at it. Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. Wow. Look at this. Go on. Verse 35. So don't throw it away now. That's right. How far have you come? You've been born again for several many years. Don't let this generation. Paul faced the same thing in Corinth, but he stood, and there was a church that was birthed, and out of that church, men and women were transformed, and I believe the same thing's going to happen today in our culture if the church will rise up, and we're going to have share, share several things here. If we will rise up and be the, the light again to our community, there are people out here who are looking for hope, and we're yeah. walking right by them every day. Great. Oh. That's good. You were, you were sure of yourselves then and still a sure thing. You don't need to stick it out. Listen, stay, stay with God's plan so you will be for the promised completion. It won't be long now. He's on his way. He'll show up any minute. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone who is right with, the, with me thrives with loyal trust. If he cuts and runs, I won't be happy. This is God. But we're not quitters who lose out. No way, Jose. Oh, I'm sorry. I offended somebody. We'll stay with it and survive trusting all the way. What does that tell us this morning? This is revelation. But let me say this to you. Faith does not spare us from pain. Now, as Christians, we think that's we think. Well, you know, if I'm paying, I, I must be in sin. No, you must be doing something right. Yes. Because Satan is not attacking you just because you're out here and you're going to church. Some of you have been through hell and back these last few weeks and months. The good news is you're back and you're not down and you're not quitting. Right. You didn't quit. You didn't throw in the towel. And the good news is that you were illuminated with the great light of Jesus Christ, his love and his kindness, and you never gave up. Though you were tempted to, you never quit. That's right. 
You see, some of God's promises will be fulfilled in eternity. Yes. We are his, we're runners in this historical race today. Yes. This is our hour. This is our day. This is our moment for the church to shine and be a light to this, to this dark and hurting world. Amen. But we want to cower back and say, oh, pastor, oh, pastor, I'm not sure about this. I'm sure about this. The good news is Jesus Christ is still Lord. Yes. He's still on the throne. Can I get a raise? Yes. yes. Uh, look at this one more time. Hebrews chapter 12. Here's what I want to start zeroing in and to encourage you on the blood of Jesus Christ as we prepare for Easter. Because it was during this time Jesus has been beginning to share with his disciples, talk with his disciples. He is betrayed. is now building up to Easter, the celebration of his life and death and resurrection. And Jesus himself suffered greatly. Let's look here in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Preach. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Now, it says the sin that is so easily, and listen, entangles us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. For who the joy set before him endured the cross, scorned its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, consider him who endured such opposition from sinning sinful men. Now, if he did it, how much do you think we're going to get it? Right. Are you ready for it? That's right. Both of us. I heard a story the other day that there was a gentleman who was in China and he was talking to some underground preachers. And the church in China, you know, if they get caught, they can be put into a prison camp and they can be destroyed, literally killed, murdered because of their, because of their faith in Jesus Christ. They said these pastors sat down and they were talking and they were sharing. They said, uh, this guy from outside says, how big is your congregation? And this church is underground. Okay, these, these are Christians underground. And the thing is, they said, how big is your congregation? They started counting up and the people. And one church was a million people wow. Amen. who was not ashamed wow. of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, if you ever see the ichthus, which is the, the fish, what the Christians would do back in the time of Paul and in all those times of uh, Peter and all this, what they would do, they would put a half a fish down like this. It's ichthus. Father, Son, the Holy And then what they would do then, and then the other person, as a believer, they would complete it to let you know that I'm a believer also. Wow. You see, we've not struggled yet with our sins as Jesus did because of, his, because of his death and resurrection. Now look at this. Here's five things or six things I want to talk to you quickly about before we, get to, before we finish this morning. Here are things I want to encourage you as the body of Christ. No, we're not the only church. We know that. But I want to encourage you this morning because I realize that Satan is re releasing upon the body of Christ such a torment. And I want you to realize that through the blood of Jesus, you are victorious. Yes. Don't you dare ever forget that. Yes. Don't you sit there and walk backwards. And here as he said there in Hebrews, he said, don't be entangled. That is a picture of a man who wears a robe. He says, pick up your garment, tuck it up under your belt so you can run. Many of us are being tripped up because of the, the things in our lives that are tripping us up. It could be cares of this world. It could be, uh, he said, sins even. The weighing us down. That we feel like we can, we can run ahead, but we're so weighted down, we can't do what God's called us to do. Number one, the first thing I want to remind you of as we look here is remembering heaven is watching you. Oh, oh that's good. Oh, come on. Say it with me. Heaven is watching me. Heaven is I can, watching come on, one more time. Heaven, heaven is watching. watching me. The good news is your life has an audience. Now, I believe those who are going before me, they're watching over the corners of heaven. Now, the word cloud there literally means, the Greek and the Latin, it means a large group of people. Yeah. 
So they called him a clown. So I believe today there's a group of people who are watching you today over you, seeing those people who prayed for you when they didn't think that you was going to make it. They prayed for you and believed for you. Those people, I believe I got a granddad up there, mom and dad, that are watching me. So sometimes when I feel discouraged, all of a sudden I, I feel so down and discouraged. I hear the voice of, don't you give up now. Right. Do you know where you're going? Come on, That's get up right. and suck it up, buttercup. Yes. Good. Paul probably up there went, come on, Steve. Is that up there? I've been shipwrecked. You've just been talked about. <laughs> Get over yourself. Preach. Paul and hurt. I've been beaten. I had to escape out of a basket. Who do you think you are? <laughs> I'm Pastor Steve Brennan, man. I'm a pansy. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. Because what you've got ahead of you is greater than you've ever imagined. Yeah. Because we are not citizens of this world. He is preparing us to live with him eternally. Hallelujah. Yes. I have an audience it's watching fine. over me. Number two, do not eliminate what eliminate what doesn't matter. Some of us right now are so bound up by this world and by all the affairs of this world and by what everybody else is saying, by watching what the news says, by looking at Facebook. Did you know what they agree with me or disagree with me? At this point in time, I don't care whether you agree with me or not. Great. Come on. Great. I had one time I spoke something and somebody jumped on there. And I tell you what, I said, I'm not responding. Why aren't you responding? Because I'm going to say something like, bite me. None of you cotton picking me. Can I have an opinion, you idiot? Did that come out? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. It was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, Thank you. I have my, my audience here who said it's okay. Yes. So I'm going to be able to use my guest certificates from you all that y'all keep giving me for Christmas. Thank y'all so much. I'll be using them soon. Thank you. Listen. Can anybody else have an opinion? And I got bombarded because somebody wants to put an article. I got articles from the other side. It depends on what filter you filter through. I can get filters. I can get this one and that one, and they'll argue one another. I don't care. I, I, that's why I listen. I know, Pastor Steve, you steal all those beans all the time. No, I don't. I borrow them. You can get them back anytime you want to. Uh, somebody said, "Well, steal this one." I said, "I ain't stealing nothing. I'm borrowing. I'll bring it back if you want me to." Listen, listen, so there needs to be some joy in this world again. We're fighting yes. one another. They hate somebody over here. They have, I take this one. They had that one. This, listen, we need a ghost of the Holy Ghost to come into our nation and begin to give us love again for all yes. men and women. Yes. Come on, church. That's good. I am not going to get caught up in that mess. Yes. No. Not even get caught up in politics. I got my views. You got yours. Guess what? I'll high five you because you're wrong. Amen. <laughs> we used to be able to laugh together. That's right. And have lunch together. Now I'm going to be friends with you. Oh, what? Like, that really hurts me. That's right. Ooh, you big boy. <laughs> Picking on me. I'll be friends with you. I'm being funny. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Is my crowd okay? Yeah, okay. we're good. Lay off the weights, the heaviness that has so pressed against you. Look, number three, run God's race for you and not other people's races. Amen. Yes. Some of you are living everybody else's life. Get your nose out of their lives. That's right. None of your business. They didn't invite you to them. None of your business. Oh, Pastor, I just got to stand. Listen, pray for them then. Love them like you've never been loving people. Love them and stand for them. Show them Christ Jesus. Let them know that you're on their side, regardless of what it might look like. That we're not giving up on them. We're not quitting. We're not throwing in the towel. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen, amen. let us run with endurance our race that's set before us. I have a hard enough time running my race and then trying to keep up with everybody else's races. Yes. If it's not your race, then drop it. Love them, pray for them. Don't worry about it. Pray for them. Be there for them. Number four, quickly. Bethany, would you come, please? That's just me. I was right now. I was running so tired because that become a weight. We're picking everybody else's battles. That's good. 
One thing I learned about Celebrate Recovery is codependency. That means, in essence, I matter about what you think about me or I'm trying to please you all the time. I'm trying to fix you all the time. That's codependency. I can't fix you. That's a hard revelation. I can't fix you. That's the most frustrating thing about me struggling or helping people with addiction. I cannot fix them. I wish I could. If I could, this whole, this whole community would be free from drugs. Yes. They would be free. But I can't do it for them. But what I can be is follow the race that God has for me. And if our paths cross and our journeys together, then I will be there to encourage them. I yes. will be there to do whatever it's going to take. But, but I, I can't make you do it. Yes. Right. That's the frustration. I cannot make you do it. That's the weight that many of you are carrying here this morning. You need to lay it down at the foot of the cross. Number four, we need to focus. Focus on Jesus and not our circumstances. Yes. You've got to run with endurance. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Our faith depends on, our faith depends on that start to finish. You've got to run with endurance. Many people today are giving out of gas. Pastor, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. I'm going to say this and just encourage you by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you can make it. Yes. Don't give up. Don't run. We're, we're all feeling the pressure of this world. Don't give up now. You've come this far, you've run this far, you've this race, you've run. It's, it's been a battle, yes, at times. But don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. By the power of the blood of Jesus, don't you dare quit. We have got to keep our eyes on the prize. The other day that people were writing, uh, if serving Christ was a felon, would you still do it? And I say to you emphatically, yes. 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 There may come a day as you read the book of Revelation, you see the things. I believe in the rapture. I believe in the rapture. Amen. But if I'm wrong, if we have to go through any persecution, you've got to understand one thing, that Jesus Christ, even in that time and period, it says the Holy Spirit, that, that rapture, when he takes his church out, that's what I believe, he takes us yes. out. That all hell is going to break us. I don't want to be here when that happens. I don't want to be here. Pastor, how could that happen? How could that happen today? You see, when I was a young man, I, I heard about Jesus Christ coming back. They talked about a computer over in, I think, Brussels. That this computer was like three or four stories. And it was unbelievable. And it was so uh, massive that that was going to be the mark. They call it the beast. The mark of the beast. Do you realize today that I have right now on my wrist, little wristwatch here, I probably have more memory than they said that, that it took the uh, flight to go to the moon. It took 256 megabytes, I think it was, something like that. I got more right here on that wristwatch than it, to go to the moon, right here. Knowledge and wisdom is so exploding. It's so exploding, it's exploding. Around us, we're afraid, and know, we're scared, and, and, and all the different things that were happening in our world today. Church is not the time to be afraid. Yeah. This right. is not the time to be scared. This is not the time to be silent. This is the time for us. This is our day now. That when he's not going to come back from a wimpy, little, beaten down, uh, anemic church, he's trying to build us up. And we can do that by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Lay aside those sins that so easily beset you. Lay them aside. If there's things in your life today, say, God, I'm sorry. Repent of them. Turn from them. Don't let them entangle you. Because it's, if those things can, they will bring you down. If you feel like I can't run any longer, look, look at your bag. Look at your bag and see if you've got all the weights off of you. Are you picking up all these burdens and all these different things that God never called you to? I say it this way. There's a God thing and there's some good things. There's some of us are doing good things that are not God things. 
God never called you to do it. But you're picking it up because you think it's good. And it's wearing you down. It's wearing out your family. It's wearing you out. It's wearing you down. It's about to burn you out. Because you picked up something that's not yours. Minimize the pain and maximize the profit. What do you mean by that? I simply mean this. The pain that we're suffering right now with people that maybe sometimes laughing at us, making fun of us, but we're goody two shoes. Look at that, Mr. Holy, Holy, Holy. Your kids look at you, go down to school, and you say, I'm not going to do this, bro. Oh, well, you got religion. No, I don't have religion. I got Jesus. I have a relationship yes. with him. And I realize this body is the Holy Spirit's temple. And I realize that. And I don't want to bring anything inside there that displeases him. And this would displease him because it's given my mind over to yes. another, another power. And that power can open the door for the enemy. And I don't want it in my body. That's right. Oh. That's good. There you go. Well, Pastor Steve, Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve, you know, uh, we're in a new generation, and these kids are experiencing sex way too early. Right. Because they are not mature enough to handle the pressure. That's right. I was 23, and Pam, and I got married. 20, I was 23. And let me tell you a secret. Six weeks after we were married, six weeks after, she became pregnant. I'm not sure I'm still able to handle it. <laughs> Some of these guys need to be men. Yes. And step up and be a man. Yes. You make it, you don't break it, you go and buy it. You go and help that child. Don't you be. Well, well how many babies do you got? I heard somebody have that. I got 10 babies. Oh, shoot. who's the daddy? I don't know. Murray, Murray, what's his face, wants to talk to you because he's going to be a good show about you. Making a hoop nanny out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't respect yourself, nobody else will. That's right. Nobody yeah. else will. Well, Pastor, I'm free. Yeah, you're free to do whatever you want to, but you listen to this. You're free to do whatever you want to, but by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't have to. That's right. Keep yourself and your husband or your wife. Keep them. Keep yourself pure. You're going to hear that today. Keep yourself pure. Hey. Myself. 
You're married, you ask your wife how, you, how much she enjoys it. She, you're not, she's not good enough. She'll feel like she's not good enough. Come on, how come I'm not satisfying you? I, I don't look like that already. You're opening doors that's tangling you in the sin. Keep your eye on the prize. This is temporarily, this is temporary. Keep your eyes on the prize. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Keep your eyes on it, please. Listen, don't be entangled again with this world trying to scream out to you. Come on, to, to, to be light. To be light, you got to be like this. To do this, to do that. Let me say this. Let Jesus be Lord of your life. And I'm not going to worry about what you think about me. I don't care yes. whether you like me or not because you don't like me because I don't do drugs. You don't want to hang with me. That's okay. If you don't want to hang with me and you don't like me for who I am, I'm sorry. But I don't want to be something like that they're like a young lady one day when she was in high school and her friends would come every week she was a virgin and every week they would come in and talk about all the exploits they had during, during the weekend. They made fun of her and they pointed at her and said, ha ha, look at what all fun we had. Her friend, their friend, when they stood up in the middle of a cafeteria and pointed at her friends making fun of her because she's still a virgin, she said, listen to me. I can be like you any day I want to, but you will never be like me again. No, that's right. Never. Never. If I wanted to do drugs, I can, but I don't want to because I've got a future ahead of me, and my future is not drug addiction. My future is a hope. I've got future written all over me. I'm a child of the King of God, and I'm not going to bow down. long ago. Now today we think somehow we're all a bunch of losers and we're never going to make it. Uh, keep doing right. Even if the world goes the opposite, keep right. doing right. Yes. Keep yes. doing right. You will never go wrong by doing what's right. You will save yourself a lot of pain if you would just do right. Do what the word says. Do what the word says. Do right. I'm going to close with this last one. Remember what Jesus Christ has done for you. Think about his sufferings. Well, people are not going to like me if I, they're going to call me an old fuddy dead. I remember I had my Bible that I carried when I was in high school. I remember carrying that Bible through the hallways. Never putting new people, not, not, not putting people down, but just to be able to stand. That kept me out of so much trouble, it wasn't even funny. It wasn't even funny, the trouble. But that holding that word of God, remembering what Jesus Christ has done. You see, the thing that I have that some of you don't have today, oh, you're, you're a preacher. No, some of you have to, have to go over some of the experiences in your mind. And Satan keeps bringing them up, what you did, how you failed. I don't have those because one day I made a commitment. I don't have those because that pain, I don't have that pain that some of you have to continually bring the guilt down and feel sorry for yourself because you, you did things that you wish you could take back. You wish you could turn back the hands of the clock. But today, you can't. But the good news is you can start today. Yes. Let God heal you. Remember what Jesus has done. Across this auditorium this morning, I can say one thing. I know this is a hard message because, listen, we're coming into a day that the church has become anemic. Yes. Preach. We say one thing but do another. And if you're if you're not here, if you're here today, you're not a believer, 
I'm sorry about that as a pastor. I apologize to you. That we're not living out what we should on church. We shout about, but on Monday we shout something different. I'm yes. sorry. I'm very sorry, and I apologize to you as a pastor, yes. as a man of God. I am so sorry. That's not how it's supposed to be. I wish everybody in this church was living right. I wish. I know some of us maybe said, I'm not where I ought to be. Let God begin to work in you today. Let him heal you. Let him minister to you. Don't sit here and be so overwhelmed by what people think. Because if you do, you'll let them run your life. You'll be more concerned about what they think about you than who God thinks about you. Amen. Today, I know in this house, there's many that are sitting here and you're saying to me, Pastor, I have been bombarded. I have been hit. I have been overwhelmed at times. And I just, I'm just tired. I understand that. But today, no condemnation, no condemnation, no put down, no shoving you, nothing other than I just want to offer you a hope today. Jesus loves you. As a believer, he loves you. If you have weights around you, today we're going to pray. We're going to believe God to help you to take that skirt, as it were, and tuck it up and to, so that you're going to be able to run. If you got sin in your life, then we're going to pray with you that God will help you to say no to that sin, to begin to turn from that sin, to let him work in your life. If you've been bad in that work and people make fun of you because you're not like everybody else, because you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do all the things that everybody else says are so cool, and you see the results, what they're walking through, let God begin to heal you and deliver you and strengthen you today. That's all I'm asking for. Let him strengthen you today. Across this auditorium as Bethany sings, there may be some men and women who feel exactly the way I share with you. It's not that you're not a bad person. It's not that you're, not, you're a sinner. It's just that, Pastor, I'm being overwhelmed. Man, I'm being overwhelmed. Can we pray together as a family and, and encourage you? All across this auditorium, if that's you, you need prayer today. No judgment, no condemnation. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to condemn you. What we're going to do is pray for you to encourage you today in faith. If that's you, right where you're at, would you stand? Nobody's going to condemn you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Others here this morning. Others here this morning. We're not going to embarrass you. Thank you, thank you so much. There's been times me, me, me would be standing. I would be standing. Just life sometimes gets hard and heavy, heavy at times. The weight of this world, the weight of the pressure. Even sin trying to attach itself to me again. I fight it daily. Every one of us. Is there any other before we pray? Look around you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're not going to embarrass you. Is there any others here this morning? Look around us, please. Look around us. And just remain standing. Can I have men and women get out of your seats? Can we just encourage one another, please? We're not here to judge you. We're not here asking you what the problems are. We're here to lift your hands up and let you know. With God's power and the blood of Jesus Christ, there's hope for you today. Would you look around you right now? Get out of your seats. Get your mask on and let's just get behind them and let's pray for these men and women, please. Back here in the back, over here on the sides. Please, if you have a mask, wear it. Please go behind them and don't breathe on them, please. Just get out of your seats. If you need prayer, just get out of your seats. Back here, some men and women back here, over here. Up here. As she badly sings, let the word of the Lord come over you this morning.
Come on, let's all get on our feet. Let's sing it together. Thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Love you guys. God bless.